Welcome to Edumate. Today we'll be going through question 11 to 20 from the 2016 Year 7 Numeracy non-calculator paper. 11. The first number in a pattern is 1.95. Each number in the pattern is formed by subtracting 0.15 from the previous number. What is the third number in this pattern? Okay, so the first number is 1.95 then you take away 0.15 so this will give you 1.80 and then take away another 0.15 and you should get 1.65 you can also do it like this But it's relatively straightforward, so should be no problems with that. Number 12. The Athletics Carnival started at 10.30 a.m. and lasted for two and a quarter hours. Rose went straight home after the carnival finished. She took half an hour, half an hour to get home. What time did Rose get home? All right, so 10.30 a.m. That's, first of all, plus two hours. That becomes 12.30 p.m. Remember the p.m.? Because it crosses noon, so it crosses the middle of the day. So we need to change it from a.m. to p.m. Now let's do the quarter of an hour. Plus a quarter of an hour, which we know is 15 minutes. So now it's 12.45 p.m. And finally, we do half an hour. We add that on as well. And we know that half an hour is 30 minutes. So we add that on. And it becomes 1.15 p.m. Thirteen. AJ paid $18.60 for a box of six high bounce balls. What is the cost of one high bounce ball? So this we can do a couple of ways. One would be long division like this. So we divide by six. How many times is six going to 18? Three. So 18 minus 18 is zero. Then we bring six down, we put the dot there, the decimal point, so that how many times does 6 go into 6? Once. And then we have the 0. So $3.10. Or a simpler way to do it, $18 here and $0.60 cents here. So $18 divided by 6 gives you $3. $0.60 divided by 6 gives you $0.10. Cents. So add them together. Get your answer. $3.10. 14. William earns money each week for doing jobs. For each job, he earns $2. He, he records the number of jobs he does in one week in a table. So let's calculate this. So we have 3 using tallies, so 6. Each one of these is equal to 5. We should all know that. So that is going to be 4. So all together, let's add these up. 3 plus 6 plus 4 gives you a total of 13. If William does the same jobs for 3 weeks, how much money does he earn? So 13 jobs and each job he earns $2. 13 times 2 is 26. And 26 is the amount of money he earns in one week. Therefore, how much money would you three weeks we need to do 26 times 3? That gives us 3 times 6, 18. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So $78 is your answer. Question 15. Tom joins a gym that has a monthly fee of $56. Pay 
members pay an extra $6 per session if they want to work with a gym trainer, which expression represents Tom's monthly gym bill if he works with a trainer for X number of sessions during the month. So first of all, this one, we know that it's the monthly fee, 56, that's fixed. So that doesn't change, so that already gives you a clue. It's most likely going to be this answer, because 56 is written there. Then we have $6 per session, So, and there are X number of sessions. So 6 times X, so we can just write this as 6X. So that's your answer. 16. The table sh shows the fixtures for six football teams on Saturday. So 9 a.m. Team A and B play each other. 10 a.m. C and D play each other. And at 11, E and F play each other. If no matches end, if no match ends in a draw, which of the following is possible? So let's rule them out one at a time. So A and F both win. Yep, that's possible. A could beat B and E and F could beat E. C and D both lose. No, that's not possible if they're versing each other, so that's wrong. A, D, E and F all win. No, E and F can't win, can't both win because they're playing each other, so that's wrong. B and C are the only teams that lose. That could be possible, but we're told that but for that to be possible, E and F would have to draw, and we're told that there is no draw, so that's wrong as well. So, first one is your answer. Cake has a uh, class had a cake store. They sold 100 cakes for $7.50 each. What is the total amount the class made from the cake store? So for this, we just do 750 times 100. 750 multiplied by 100. So the quick way to do this, how many zeros are in 100? There are two zeros. So that means we move the decimal point to the right two places. If it's multiply, then we move to the right. And if it's divide, then we move the decimal point to the left. So here it's multiply. Now it's going to go here. Now the decimal point is here. So in other words, it's going to be 750 point, or we can just put a zero there, we all know that's the same as $750. The answer is 750 Liam, and uh, this is question 18, Liam had a leaf, so it's shown right there, he reflected the leaf to the right across the dotted line, then he rotated the leaf 90 degrees clockwise. Which of these shows the final position of the leaf? Okay, this is a little bit tricky to draw, so I'll use this as the indicator. So follow this arrow. So when you reflect it along the vertical axis, this arrow is going to be here. And this stem is going to be here as usual. I'll just try and draw it. So it's not going to come out great, but it's going to be something like this. So, actually, ignore this one. It's, let's say it's going to be here, according to this diagram. It's going to be around there. Okay, and then rotate 90 degrees clockwise. So we'll put this this way. And if you have that, then the arrow is pointing here. So that corresponds to this. So that's the same as this one. Now, that's why this is your answer. Now, question 19. Tim wants to buy some clothes. The table shows the prices of the items he wants to buy. So these are the items and these are the prices. Tim estimates the cost of the clothes within a range. Which of these gives the correct range for the cost of these clothes? All right, let's just round these up to a reasonable amount. So this is around 100, this is around 120, this is around, let's, let's round it out to 10 for now. And this is around 140. So if we add all four of these, we're going to get 
370. That is between these two. So this is your answer. Next one. Jane and David had identical chocolate bars. David ate seven eighths of his chocolate bar. Jane ate more of her chocolate bar than David. What fraction of a chocolate bar could Jane have eaten? Okay, so one thing to remember for these questions is that even when we start from this, two thirds is greater than one half. Every time the numerator goes up by one, the denominator goes up by one. Three quarters is greater than two thirds. Four fifths is greater than three quarters. Five sixths greater than four fifths, and so on. So you get the point. Even if you convert this into percentages, you'll figure out that it works the same way. So, Jane ate more than 7 eighths, so only this can fulfill that. Just be careful with this one, this is actually equal to 80%. And 7 eighths, if we work it out, we know that 1 eighth is equal to 12.5%. That's a that's something you should try and remember. It can be quite useful, especially for these kinds of questions. So we times by 7, and we times this side by 7 as well. Um, if we do that correctly, that will give you 87.5. So this is actually greater than this, but we need chains to be greater than David's, so that's why this can't be correct. Only this can be correct. Alright, so that's all for now. You'll find the solutions and explanations to the other questions in this paper and my other videos. Bye for now.